Now in this case, there are two wires A and B that are joined together like this. Now both the wires A and B have the same length L. They are made up of the same material. But the radius of wire A is R and the radius of wire B is 2R. So the wire A is thinner. Right? Now it has been given that it is vibrating at a frequency such that the joint of the two wires forms a node. So this point, which is, which is the intersection of both the wires, is a node. Okay? And let's assume that the frequency of vibration is F. Cool? Now if the number of anti-nodes in wire A is P and that in wire B is Q, then you have to find out what is the ratio P is to Q. Understood? Yeah? Now, first let's focus on wire A. You can imagine this wire as a wire fixed at both the ends and vibrating in its pth harmonic. Right? And how can I claim this? Well, because it has been given that there are P number of anti nodes formed on this wire. So think about the wire which is fixed at two ends and vibrating in its fundamental mode. In this case, can you see how many number of anti nodes are there? Well, one. Similarly, for the second harmonic, the number of anti nodes will be two, and so on and so forth. And that is how I can claim that if the number of anti nodes on wire A is P, then it must be oscillating in its pth harmonic, right? And you know that we can find out the frequency of the nth harmonic in the case of a wire fixed at two ends by using the formula n upon 2L under root T by mu, correct? So in this case, Fa will be equal to, so P divided by 2L under root T divided by and let's write mu as rho into A. Okay. So from here you can see that the area is going to be pi R square for wire A and this formula becomes rho pi R square. And do note that this frequency is equal to F. Right? And now let's focus on the wire B. If on this wire the number of anti nodes are Q, then it will have, it, it must be oscillating in its Qth harmonic. Right? So FB is going to be equal to Q divided by 2L under root, and tension is same. But the radius of this wire is 2R. So this becomes 4 rho pi R square. And this is also equal to F. So the frequency is not going to change, right? And we can find out what is the ratio P is to Q with the help of these two equations. So what I'm going to do is divide 1 by 2. So if I do this operation, then F and F will be gone, right? 2L, 2L will be gone. And can you see, you will get, so 2P by Q is equal to 1, or you can say the ratio P is to Q is going to be 1 is to 2. So as simple as that, we found out in this case, option B must be the right value of the ratio P is to Q. The length of the segment AB in this figure is 1.5 meter and the mass is 12 gram. You have to find out the frequency of vibration with which the wire vibrates in two loops, leaving the middle point of the wire between the pulley and the fixed support. And then you have to choose the right option out of these given options. So if there are two loops formed in the segment AB, then it is going to look like this, right? And clearly, this wire AB is oscillating in its second harmonic, right? 
And we know that we can find out the frequency of the second harmonic in this case by applying the formula n upon 2l under root t by mu, right? So this is going to be 2 divided by 2l under root t by mu. Where we can easily find out mu, that is mass per unit length. And the tension in the string you can see is 180 Newton. Right? So let's put the values here to find out the frequency of its second harmonic. This is going to be 1 upon 1 1.5 under root 180 divided by. So the mass is 12 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 kg per unit length 1.5. And after simplifying, you're going to get the frequency to be equal to 100 hertz. So when the segment AB is vibrating with a frequency of 100 hertz, then you would see two loops in this segment. Now, according to this problem, there is a horizontal rope which has a length of 1 meter and the mass of this rope is 40 grams. Now this rope is fixed at one end and is tied to a light string at the other end. So this is the case of a string fixed at one end and free at the other end. Remember? The tension in the rope has been given to you as 400 Newton and you have to find out the wavelengths in the first and second over two. So in this case we know that the fundamental frequency will be given by V divided by 4L, right? And when this string is oscillating in its first overtone, that is third harmonic, then the frequency of the first overtone is going to be 3F0, right? And the frequency of the second overtone, or you can say the fifth harmonic is 5F0. So let's first find out what is the value of V that is wave speed. We will use this formula. So V is going to be equal to under root the tension which is 400 divided by the linear mass density. So the mass is 40 gram or you can say 0 0.04 kg. So this is 0 0.04 and the length is 1 meter, right? So from here you are going to get the speed as 100 meter per second, right? So what is going to be the fundamental frequency? The fundamental frequency is 100 divided by 4, that is 25 hertz. And once we have found this out, then we know that the first overtone will have the frequency of 75 hertz. And the second overtone will have the frequency of 125 hertz, okay? But we don't have to find the frequency. We have to find out the wavelength. So once we have the frequency, we can use the formula. Speed is equal to frequency into wavelength, right? To find this out. So first, let's find out what is the wavelength when the string is oscillating in its first overtone. So V is 100. So 100 will be equal to, and what was the frequency? Well, frequency is 75 hertz of the first overtone. And let's say the wavelength is lambda 1. So lambda 1 comes out to be 100 divided by 75, or you can say 4 by 3 meter. Correct? And similarly, for the second overtone, the speed is going to be equal to the frequency, which is 125 into wavelength, let's say lambda 2. And you will get the value of lambda 2 from here as 100 divided by 125 or you can say 4 by 5 meter and there you go. So we have the answer and you can take option B as the right option. Now in this figure a thin wire is stretched by a block going over a pulley as you can see, right? Now the wire vibrates in its fifth harmonic in resonance with a particular tuning fork. So if you assume the frequency at which this tuning fork vibrates is F, then at this frequency, this segment of the wire has its fifth harmonic. All right. So there are going to be 
five antinodes in this segment when it is oscillating in its fifth harmonic. Make sense? Now what happens? Well, now a beaker containing a liquid of density 800 kg per meter cubed is brought under the block so that the block is completely dipped into the beaker like that. And now the wire vibrates in its sixth harmonic in resonance with the same tuning fork. So the tuning fork is vibrating in the same frequency F. But because of the change in tension, in this wire, now the wire is vibrating in its sixth harmonic. So now there are six antinodes in this wire segment. All right. Now, if the density of the material of the block is 2.6 into 10 to the power x kg per meter cubed, then you have to find out what is the value of this x. Okay. So let's get started. Now, when the wire is vibrating in its fifth harmonic, then you know that the frequency of vibration can be given by the formula n divided by 2l under root t by mu. Right? So we have assumed the frequency of the tuning fork to be f. So f is going to be equal to, and n is 5 in this case, so 5 divided by 2l under root t divided by mu. Right? And what is the tension in this string in the first case? Well, the tension is equal to the weight of this block. And let's assume that the volume of this block is some V. Okay. And density is rho. So the weight is rho Vg. So F is equal to 5 divided by 2L under root rho vg divided by mu. Okay, let's say this is equation one. Now let's jump to the second case. In the second case, the frequency of the tuning fork is not changing. So this is still f, right? But for this frequency now, for this frequency, the string is vibrating in its sixth harmonic. So this is 6 divided by 2L under root T dash divided by mu because the tension evidently is changed. Now how much is T dash? Well, because of the immersion, buoyant force is going to act on the block in the upwards direction. And the force of gravity continues to act on it in the downwards direction and the magnitude is rho Vg. Now, how much is the buoyant force? Well, remember Archimedes principle, buoyant force is going to be equal to the weight of the liquid displaced, right? So let's write it here. The buoyant force Fb is going to be equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. The volume of the liquid displaced is equal to the volume of the block, right? The block is completely immersed. So the volume of the liquid displaced is V. Density of the liquid displaced is rho 1, which is 800 kg per meter cubed, into G is the buoyant force. Right? So in this case, so in this case, T dash, T dash is going to be equal to rho Vg minus rho 1 Vg. Or let's take Vg common. This is rho minus rho 1. Right? So the frequency becomes 6 divided by 2L under root Vg rho minus rho 1 divided by mu. Right? And this is equation 2. So you can look at equation 1 once again. This is equation 1. Right? And this is equation 2. And with the help of these two equations, we are going to find out the value of the missing x. So the left hand side of both of these equations is same, which is the frequency of the tuning fork, right? So we can compare the right hand side of both the equations. Okay, so let me rub this out.
So what do we have? We have 5 divided by 2L under root rho Vg divided by mu to be equal to 6 divided by 2L under root Vg rho minus rho dash divided by mu. Correct? Okay. So we can see from here the L is going to get cancelled out. V and G will be gone and mu will also be gone and let's square both the sides. So on the left hand side we will have 25 rho on the right hand side 36 rho minus 36 rho dash right. So the value of rho comes out to be 36 rho dash and now we can put the value you can say rho dash or rho 1 same thing so this is 800 divided by how much 11 right and this is kg per meter cubed so rho comes out to be 2.6 into 10 raised to the power 3 kg per meter cubed and can you see the value of x is 3 so awesome problem and in this case we found out that the value of x should be 3 and you can take option C as the right value of x. The mass of the pan in this figure is 100 gram and this contains a 1 kg block as you can see. Now when this wire AB is plugged then it vibrates with a fundamental frequency of 110 hertz. An additional mass m is then added to the pan and a fundamental frequency of 130 Hz is now detected. You have to find out what is the value of the added mass m. So we know that when a wire fixed at two ends vibrates in, it, in its fundamental mode, then the fundamental frequency is given by putting n is equal to 1 in this formula, right? Which is 1 upon 2 L under root T by mu. And because there is a change in tension, that is why the fundamental frequency is changed. So in the first case, when there is pan with this mass of 1 kg, then the tension is 1.1 g, right? And therefore, the fundamental frequency 110 will be equal to 1 divided by 2 L under root t which is 1.1 g divided by mu right and now let's add mass m in this case the tension is changed right let me use a different color here so let's assume that tension becomes t dash which is going to be equal to 1.1 plus m into g where it is assumed that the mass m is in kg. Alright. So in this case the fundamental frequency 130 is going to be equal to 1 divided by 2L. The string is unchanged. Right. And under root 1.1 plus m into g divided by mu. And now with the help of these two equations we can easily find out the value of m. Right. So when you simplify this, you are going to get the value of m as 0.44 kg. So as simple as that, we found out in this case option b must be the right value of the additional mass m.